There was a number of steps and, and policies that had to be violated for this to happen. And it was clearly reckless. And we're going to prove that. Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. Context is everything. If the Rust tragedy had played out differently, say within a private uh, residence where you had, say, a private individual playing the fool or doing something in a residence somewhere and the gun went off, you would have a particularly legal apparatus, a particular approach to deal with those circumstances. You would still be testing issues such as intent and negligence, but it would be a rather different um, scenario than what we have here. And so it's quite important to look at this situation in terms of the Rust incident quite objectively. The scenario that we have here is that the incident took place on a movie set during a production and all people involved were co-workers or crew. It's, an, it's within that context that we've got to see this thing playing out. It's tempting to think that workers' compensation could be or should be the way to go to resolve or to compensate for the damages, and it may well address some of them. For From a legal perspective, especially a wrongful death suit, Brian Panish and Randy McGinn from two respective law firms have come up with a clever strategy. Before we get to that, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do like, share, leave a comment, and let's get started. So I am going to put a clip in the description. It's uh, it, it's uh, the extended version of the clip I played right at the beginning where you actually have an interview with Brian Panish and he actually responds somewhere around halfway through the seven-minute clip saying why um, this is not a workers' compensation case. And I think he says it's because she was an independent contractor. And that is a clip from News Nation now. But if we go back to this idea of a private home scenario the same sort of incident playing out in a private home scenario, the test would really be what would the reasonable man do in, in a situation of, you know, he finds himself with a gun in his hands, it goes off, um, you know, what would be reasonable to do in those circumstances? And I think the standards would be a lot lower because it would be, you know, kind of informal um, playing around. There, there, there are no rules really at home for what you should do with your firearm um, in a broad sense. But in a workplace scenario, the test is governed by protocols. So just in terms of a workplace scenario, you'd have protocols, but then in terms of the safety protocols on a movie set, th that is a well-worn path. That is really well-known um, what is done, right? And so I think one particularly effective legal avenue open to the litigating attorneys in this latest suit is to cross-reference all those safety protocols with the facts of the case. And so what they're trying to assess is the degree of, um, of willfulness, willfulness and wantonness. It's essentially the willful and wanton question, which is to say that is a course of action which shows an actual or deliberate intention to cause harm, or if it's not intentional, it shows the utter indifference, the degree of indifference or conscious disregard for the safety of others or their property. And I've got to say, when you look at some of the things like the T-shirts that were printed, the tone, the callousness of some of the uh, texts and, and comments that are made, it does feel like conscious disregard, doesn't it? Now, because of the size of this crime scene, because of this, um, how can I put it, the scale of what we're dealing with here, it is quite easy to get confused with how do you actually go about making your case and proving your case. And it really does come down to two tests, willfulness, which is to do with intent, and let's call it wantonness. I'm not sure if wantonness is a word, a word but Wanton has to do with the degree of recklessness or lack of care, which could reasonably and foreseeably jeopardize the safety of others in a particular instance. 
And so uh, when you have a, a very high degree of wanton recklessness that is also showing um, a kind of indirect intent. In other words, you may not be deliberately intending to harm someone, but your conscious disregard for safety ends up being an approximation of a kind of intent. Does that make sense? And so Panish and McGinn have come up with 15 um, areas where Mr. Baldwin, Alec Baldwin and the Rust production disregarded, and they say at least 15 industry standards. Industry standards required Mr. Baldwin to be trained and qualified in safe handling and proper firing procedures before accepting the revolver. The first rule for safety with firearms on a production set required Mr. Baldwin to treat all firearms as if they were loaded and refrain from pointing a firearm at anyone. The industry standard required Mr. Baldwin to remember that any person or object at which he points a firearm could be destroyed. Industry standards required Mr. Baldwin to ensure any crew in the line of fire had protective glass or other personal protective equipment. Industry standards required remote operation of the camera if Mr. Baldwin ever aimed the gun at the camera. In preparation for this video, I actually wanted to play all the instances, not necessarily the entire instance, but all the instances where Brian Panish says the words industry standards, and he does say them many, many times. If we go through this list of 15 industry standards that he, say, he says were disregarded, you know, number one is fail to use a replica or rubber prop gun. I don't really know whether that is um, extremely pertinent here. I mean, you could think about that in terms of the Crow movie as well. Um, it's certainly a safety standard. I don't know whether it's really that that important or pertinent here. Um, number two, fail to treat the gun at all times as if it were loaded. That is a more pertinent point, I would think. Number three, fail to refrain from pointing a firearm at anyone. That is also another pertinent point. Four, fail to treat the gun as if any person the firearm was pointed at could be destroyed. That is very pertinent. Number five, fail to keep finger off the trigger. That might be quite hard to, uh, to prove. Number six, fail to operate camera remotely when the firearm was aimed at or near the camera. I think that is also another pertinent point, and so one can go through all of these 15. Um, number 10, fail to thoroughly brief all cast and crew in a safety meeting. I'm not sure if that one is so applicable, because there were some safety meetings. I don't know if there were enough, but there certainly were some. So of these 15 industry standards, of these 15 safety protocols, I don't think it's necessary to prove... 15 out of 15. I don't think you need to prove all of them. I think if they can make the case for around half of them or two-thirds of them, they will have essentially made a case for the wanton aspect. The more wanton, in a sense, the more willful. And so the more violations they can prove, the more damaging, the more damages they can claim, at least theoretically. Does that make sense? Of the 15 protocols named here, I think, and obviously it's just my opinion, I think there's some meat, some evidence to support the issues mentioned in number 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 11, 13, 14, and 15. That's 11. That's enough, isn't it? So I'm not going to take it further than that. I will obviously continue my coverage of the Alec Baldwin case. I will also be doing another live tomorrow on Barry Morphew. Not 100% sure what time that's going to be, but it'll be in the afternoon. And we'll be going through the discovery just as we did last week, step by step. And we are, we are definitely going to be finding a lot of things that we didn't know about. That certainly was my experience when I read through the discovery systematically and slowly. So I'm going to be taking you guys through that tomorrow. So look out for that. Thank you for listening and I'll see you guys next time.
Thank you.